What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about load versus time under tension. Time under tension as a style of training has gotten a little bit more press in recent years but it's been around for a while. In fact, back in the, I think the 80s, there was a style of training called super slow. And uh, the idea is that you can create more tension on the muscles by going slower. As our understanding of how load and TUT have evolved, we know now that time under tension plays a role in hypertrophy, as does the total load. A new study sought to examine a little bit further what particular role time under tension plays in hypertrophy and load. So they had three different conditions and this was a crossover design. A crossover design means that each participant does every protocol. When I say the protocols, they do one, then they have a washout period, then they do another, and it's really nice because each participant acts as their own control. So they had three different conditions. One was kind of their control condition, which was three sets of eight reps at 60% of a one rep max using four second reps. So each rep is taking them four seconds. Then they had another group doing three sets of eight reps at 60% of a one rep max, but taking six seconds per rep. So about 50% more time under tension at the same load. Then they had a third group that was doing three sets of eight at 70% of a one rep max at a normal pace. And they looked at um, muscle activation as well as blood lactate and some other markers. What they found was that the slow group, the six second rep group, was better at increasing blood levels of lactate, whereas the higher load group was better at increasing muscle activation. Now, what does this mean for you guys? Well, it's hard to know because it's just a short-term study, but one of the things we know about hypertrophy is a lot of different types of training can produce hypertrophy. What seems to matter most is basically how many hard sets do you do? By hard set, we mean uh, getting within, you know, a few reps of failure. And research tends to show that regardless of kind of how you do those hard sets, whether they're high reps, low reps, high load, low load, if you get close to failure, it seems to produce similar results in terms of hypertrophy. Now, some people might think, well, if you do time under tension training, you're getting more time under tension, kind of. Let me give you an example. So in this study, they did three sets of eight reps using uh, four or six second reps. That was probably pretty close to failure in the six second rep group. How many reps could you do if you weren't doing six second reps? At 60% of a one rep max, I mean, you're probably gonna be up around 15, 20, maybe for some people, even 30 repetitions. And if you're going at a normal pace, well, how much time under tension is that? Because time under tension is cumulative. So even though you are spending less time on each rep, because you are accumulating more total reps, the time under tension is probably gonna be quite similar as long as you're taking it equally close to failure between conditions. Now, that being said, I'm not saying time under tension style training is useless. I've used things like tempo squats uh, in my training before. Why would I do something like that if it doesn't seem to be superior and possibly maybe even a little bit inferior? One reason is teaching myself on compound lifts to maintain tightness and control. Another reason might be if I have an injury that's aggravated by velocity. In fact, I just dealt with this where I had a lower back injury kind of act up on me. I wasn't able to squat at my full velocity, but I was able to do slow count eccentrics with pauses at the bottom with no pain. So I was able to still get close to my normal style of training just by slowing down the reps. So I think that's the true utility of time under tension training. I don't think it's superior for hypertrophy, but it may still have some utility, especially for people who are dealing with like some kind of injuries and that sort of thing. Uh, or if you just enjoy doing it, as long as you're taking most of your sets close to failure and you're getting sufficient volume, intensiveness, intensiveness meaning close to failure, load and time under tension for each individual rep probably matters a lot less. So you can kind of do what you enjoy. Uh, and the great thing about growing muscle is it appears there is definitely a lot more ways than one to skin a cat or swole a cat. You know what I mean. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out our educational books where I break down the science of things like fat loss and contest prep in far more detail. And if you need help with nutrition, carbon diet coach, guys, 
We have over 15,000 members. It's 10 bucks a month. It coaches you for nutrition based on your goals and individual metabolism. You cannot beat it. We have a 4.8 star rating in the App Store. Go check it out. Links are in the description. Also the Workout Builder, if you need programming advice, if you wanna learn how to implement some of these strategies we're talking about in terms of time under tension and that sort of thing, links in the description, guys. Hope you all have a great week, and I'll catch you next time.